Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to go on to plate tectonics. Going back, there was a gentleman, Alva Wegener. He proposed the theory of continental drift. He believed that all of the earth's plates or continents were at one point this one supercontinent and eventually split apart to form the continents that we have now. That supercontinent he called Pangaea which means all land, and that's on page nine of your earth science reference table, was formed about 200 million years ago. We'll get a little bit more to that point. He had some evidence for continental drift, one of them being the jigsaw fit of continents. So if we look right here, we have South America fitting into this elbow or this notch of Africa. So he believed that, and this is, we just see this in other areas too, not just here. So the way they fit, kind of work together. We also see similar rock strata between us. So the rocks that are over here are similar to the rocks that are over there. And we also see fossil evidence. So we may have some sort of fossil, we may have some sort of fossil in this area, and it also crosses the bridge into here. If we find similar fossils, on separate continents, it means at some point they had to be connected so that that organism could travel from back and forth. Uh, moving on from him, we had Harry Hess, who proposed the theory of plate tectonics. So what we had previously was that they all these continents moved. Harry Hess said it's not just the continents moved, but there's a lot more to it than just that. He took some of that evidence that we saw, saw with continental drift and added it into his theory of plate tectonics. This is where the outer earth is broken up into these large big plates that float on top of this softer rock that helps them move about. So if we take a look at North America, going back 450 million, uh, 458 million years ago, this is page nine of our reference table. So we're going back 458 million years. We could see that this is our equator, that North America and Canada was over here. And as time goes on, we can see it's here. Keep drawing in our equator. Notice that it keeps moving away from the equator into it's pretty much present condition. And so in what direction is North America move? So we could see here from at the equator and moving above and above that it has moved north over time. This is Pangaea. This is that supercontinent that Alfred Wegener was talking about. So we have Eurasia, North America, South America. Notice how they're hooked together here. Africa and South America, how they're hooked here. So the continents, their actual shapes look similar to what we see today. And that evidence, remember, was similar rock strata. So we have rocks that bridge both South America and Africa. Same age rocks, that means it's connected. The same with this, this green area. So the rocks that are over here have been dated to be the same as those over there. Also similar fossils. Like this picture, you can see that we have this glass terrace. Notice that we find it here, here. And as we go all the way over to Australia, in article, you could see that the same fossil. The only way that this fossil could be here on all continents if it was able to move from one to one to one in a relatively short period of time. Notice we have Mesosaurus, same thing. Here it is. Notice that move between these two continents. So we find these same fossils on, se on separate continents, it means at some point they had to be joined together. Here's just looking back, same thing, similar fossils how they bridge the gap and we can follow or path them through these all these areas. Which brings us to uh, Earth's tectonic plates. We'll hold off on the screencast until next time. Hope you enjoyed this. Take care.